Good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Jim, and this is Katie. Hello. Pastor Jim and Katie Langwa from <laughs> the Master's House, and we're broadcasting from our home in Ashland, Virginia. And our church is in Hanrico, Virginia, just a little bit away. And uh, But we're meeting virtually right now. And so we're so glad you're with us. We are in our living room at the Langwa Ranch in this wonderful town of Ashland, Virginia, about 15 miles north of Richmond, right off of Interstate 95. Mm -hmm. And so we love it here, and we're glad to have you in our home. So uh, today we're going to have a very interesting day, but uh, the one thing that I want to mention first is that uh, tomorrow will be Memorial Day. Oh, that's what you're going to mention first. Uh, I did that. She's uh, <laughs> doing the technology here. And so tomorrow will be Memorial Day, and uh, we will not forget is the way that we're uh, saying this. We will not forget. And uh, so I'd like to take a minute um, to uh, not really, you, we want to remember that. Some people say celebrate, but it's not really a celebration. It's a remembrance and um, to give respect and honor to those who have uh, given their lives for our country in, in service to our country in the military forces. Matter of fact, Katie, I found out that there's been more than one million men and women who have given their lives in service to our country. Wow. Over one million. I also want to thank um, all the veterans mm -hmm. uh, and those who are currently serving uh, to keep us safe and free. So I want to just take a minute to uh, uh, pray for those who have lost loved ones in the military and uh, for their families. So Father, we come before you in Jesus' name in uh, absolute remembrance and respect and honor to and the men and women who have given their lives to our country over the many years or for the country uh, for many, many, in many ways um, all around the world to keep us free. We are a free country and we thank you for that. And they've given their lives and we pray for their families. Mm -hmm. We pray for uh, the, uh, grace for them and strength for them with the loss of their loved ones but want you to know that we're very thankful for what they have done for us. And also, uh, all the veterans that are out there, we want to thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we're really grateful for you. Mm -hmm. We honor you today and your families for allowing you to go and do that and supporting you. Mm -hmm. But also for those that uh, are currently serving mm -hmm. uh, in, around the world, well, we pray for you. Mm -hmm. We pray for your strength, uh, your joy, your health, and your safety. Angels guard over them and keep them safe in Jesus' name as they stand for freedom in America, all around the world, protecting us in Jesus' name. Jesus name. And God bless them. Yes. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. We're just very, very thankful yeah. uh, for you all. Uh, today, uh, I want to mention that at the end of the service, we will be receiving communion. So we'd love for you to get a little glass of juice or water or something like that would work. Uh, you know, Jesus turned the water into wine, so I'm figuring if all we have is water, we can use water. And, uh, but, and get you some bread or a cracker, uh, something like that, for um, uh, the covenant uh, meal that we're going to have right at the end of service. We'd love for you to join us in that. We do that every week. And so, uh, <clears throat> welcome. We, uh, you know what I want to do? I want to pray for everybody that's out there that's going to listen today. Okay. <laughs> so, Father, we just come before you in Jesus' name and pray for all those that are here with us today. All those that are watching this at a later date through YouTube or our website, we pray that this message will be a blessing to you. We pray it would be edifying, edification for you, and that it would give you grace and strength uh, in the things that you face, and increase your faith in Jesus' name. Anoint us, Lord, to minister this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we're so thankful you're here. I've got a, a title of a message today, uh, and it's called... Uh, uh, very interesting. Put on the garment. And I actually have an object lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so put on the garment. And uh, Katie put up the little uh, si uh, advertisement we, we did there. But watch out for this. Yeah. <laughs> but um, this it's is a, a garment hanger. <laughs> it's where we hang our garments. And one thing that I find interesting is if you look at it carefully, it resembles something. <laughs> what does it resemble? Oh, a question it mark. It resembles a question mark. And so I have a question today about uh, your garment and this hanger here. I'm going to put that back over there for now. The question is, what will you wear today? Hmm. And the answer should be, 
to put on the garment. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Put on the garment. There is the garment that's very, very interesting. We're going to find the scripture for that. And uh, I know what I'm going to wear today. As you can see, there's no garment on here. Uh, so I'm talking some spiritual, but I put on my garment today. Did you put on your garment today? I sure did. There's no birthday suits here today. <laughs> no <birthday>. So there, <laughs> we have put on our garments. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> but the title of the message is Put On the Garment. Amen? Yes, amen. And so let's go to uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Not, no, chapter 61. Let's change that. Change that. Book of Isaiah, chapter 61. And we're going to read the first three verses in the New King James Version. We'll spend most of our time in the New King James, and I think I have a couple we'll read in the New Living Translation. But why don't you read this to us, Katie? All right. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness. Mm, that's good. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Now, if you look at uh, verse, uh, let's see, where is it? Verse 2, when it says, uh, in the day of vengeance uh, of our God, there is a semicolon there because he's about to give a list yeah. of what he's going to, uh, he's proclaiming to be acceptable. Uh, to comfort all who mourn, the first is the one. first one. Yeah. To console those who mourn in Zion. Now, that sounds like a repeat, but could count it as one or two, whatever. And then to give them beauty for ashes. And the ashes is um, really a loss. It stands for death and things like that. And to give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy <clears throat> for mourning. Mm -hmm, that's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in a time of grief. Mm -hmm. And then this one, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now, I don't know about you, but have you ever had a spirit of heaviness on you? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, we've all, well, I'm sure everybody has. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so this, this verse is very, very important to us. That he came, Jesus came to proclaim the year uh, that we would have the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we're going to really look at that one statement there, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And when I say put on the garment, I'm really talking about this garment of praise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put on the garment of praise for something, mm -hmm. the spirit of heaviness. And yeah. we've all had heavy spirits at times, yes. one or another. And sometimes it can be pretty difficult to handle. It can be. You know, and uh, <clears throat> very, very difficult times. But in the original Hebrew, this word garment in that scripture could stand for clothing, mm -hmm. covering, or mantle. Okay. That's an interesting mantle. word. That mantle. is interesting. And mantle, some of the definitions of the word mantle mean garment, mm -hmm. cloak. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the spiritual side, glory and splendor. That's interesting. So when it talks about putting on the garment... Of praise, it's talking about the covering. Of course, it's clothing, but it, it, it's also spiritual. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's and and then this word mantle comes into play, uh, still meaning the word garment, but uh, cloak, glory, and splendor. Wow. Oxford Dictionaries has a uh, definition of the word garment. It's not a, a a biblical definition or Hebrew, but they call gar a garment an item of clothing, which we understand. Yeah. But I like this one. A windproof outer garment. That's interesting. Windproof. <clears throat> it's like a windbreaker. <laughs> it's like a windbreaker, yes. A windproof outer garment or something that protects you from the elements. That's interesting. Or, you know, if I want to get a little creative and go right deep ahead here, you know, the wind is often referred to something that is tossed to and fro ah so it's interesting that it's a windproof outer garment because it means that it's stable yes and that it can't be this way or that way mm. it's direct mm. you can make it through it yes stable yeah and the word garment we don't really use that word a lot in 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 today at least we don't. Uh, not in my realm but it does show up in okay. a lot of places like a <laughs> garment bag 
maybe I was use that say, word. garment bag. She is a true <laughs> bag lady, and, and and I say that in a compliment because she's very organized and she is a second grade teacher and she's got her bags. And the one thing she loves to get for presents is bags. That's true. And I I noticed, uh, you know, since I've met you, that there's. <laughs> Many ladies who they really like bags. Yes. And I don't mean it negatively. They have a bag for everything. Yes. You know? That's it's, how you it, organize. And I don't mean that, uh, you know, you could it's put that in a well, negative context, but I don't mean it that way. It's because you're on the go. Yeah. And there's also design that has to do with your outfit. I mean, we can go sure. all the way with this. Sure. Uh, but garment bag. And, and uh, then there's the garment industry. Yes. See, I'm not really a part of that or... Um, um, you are now. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. She is making me part of the garment industry. There you go. There Skinny you go. jeans Skinny and cool jeans. stuff. I mean, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm a work of art. You are. Yeah. You are. Hi, art. God says so. <laughs> art language right there. Um, uh, then there's a, a word garment design. A lot of people yes. are involved in garment design or there are things called a, a garment factory. Yes. And a garment hanger this this again is i call it a, a hanger but some people call it a garment hanger you know and so i have a garment on or a clothes hanger don't yeah. really use that word as much but and then there's even a term called the garment district in big oh. cities all around the world that have places where garments are designed and and manufactured and distributed all around the world and of course there's a big employment industry and all of that involved in that but Here's a question. What's the difference between a garment and clothes? Okay. Well, I came up with this one, looking at uh, kind of studying the word out. Garment, quote, is a more professional and business-like expression. Okay. I guess that would relate to those things like the garment district and garment factory and garment, garment bag. Indus- like industry. A garment bag is used to mm. travel with your suits or your dresses. Sure, garment, yes. Normally, it's not mm-hmm. your t-shirts. So no. it's your... You know, it's your um, well-to-do things that you're trying to keep professional. And the word is is used uh, mostly, maybe not mostly, but a a lot in business, manufacturing, and industry purposes. Mm -hmm. And so, but the word clothes is plural, meaning several items Mm -hmm. um, of clothing, while garment is a single arm. Uh, It it refers to a single item of clothing. Isn't that interesting? Not, you know, this is... Not to be fascinating or anything. I'm just trying to it study is the words. Is it Fashion fascinating? Fashion is fascinating. There you go. And Fashion, <laughs> yes. Uh, now, in the Bible, this word garment comes up in a lot of places. And so I found an article on a website called thesheepfold.org about uh, the garment of praise. And they had some very interesting notes. So why don't you begin to read this? All right. It says, by using the words the garment, Mm -hmm. God is telling us it is not just a garment to cover up heaviness, but it is the garment. The garment, that's different, yes. Meaning the only garment that will drive away a heavy spirit, and that is the garment of praise. Now, this ties into the the message. Originally, I was going to call the message, put on your garment, Mm -hmm. but that's not what the Bible says. It says put on on the garment. garment. And when I saw these notes, I said, I can't call it your garment. I need to call it the garment. It's very important. Drive away a heavy spirit. Drive it away. Isn't that interesting? So not cover it, but drive it away. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Keep going. A garment is a piece of clothing that you put on to cover yourself. So the garment of praise is a spiritual garment that you put on to cover your spirit. Interesting. In other words, a garment of praise is a garment to put on the inside of you instead of the outside. Wow. And the spiritual garment of praise is the only one that is designed by the designer, God, to be just the right size to cover and replace the spirit of heaviness. Whoa. That's interesting. So your garment uh, or the the garment of praise that he's telling us is available to us now is enough to replace the spirit of heaviness. Well, it's interesting that it says that it covers our spirit. Mm-hmm. Yes. So isn't that interesting that the garment covers our spirit but drives out the spirit of heaviness? That's very so cool. So it's that protection piece. Isn't that something? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The windproof. And the wind... Uh, what do we call it? Windbreaker. Windbreaker. <clears throat> yeah. Now... I also found something interesting because in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, New King James again, 
it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but uh, of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, a proper translation of that, you could say that he's not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of yes. power and of love uh, and of a sound mind. That would be a correct uh, way to uh, read that. So I realized that 2 Timothy 1.7 is spirit to spirit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, we would have, uh, God's not given us a spirit of fear, but given us a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. So mm -hmm. the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind is what rules out the spirit of fear. Yes. But I said, well, why doesn't the scripture concerning a spirit of heaviness tell us that there's a spirit to deal with that? Mm. It says a garment instead of a spirit. That's interesting. And I, and I was just, I said, it may not mean anything. Uh, uh, but I, I just decided to look at it and uh, because it says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so why... A garment of praise as opposed to a spirit of praise yes. to get rid of the spirit. So I believe this is what I've come up with and just my thoughts. You can tell me what you think. I mean, I can't preach it as doctrine, but I think it, I think it could be very, very, uh, it helps me to understand it. Well, you could pose it as a question. Yeah. Do you think that this could be because? Yeah. Yeah. I believe the word garment is more of a mantle. Okay. And the word mantle in the Hebrew, because we know that uh, the word um, uh, garment will translate to mantle, and now we uh, the, this word mantle uh, in, in the Hebrew is adaret, a d d e r e t, and it refers to one's calling. Okay. So if we look at that, then I would think, wait a minute, the garment of praise or the mantle of praise. Okay. If we look at it that way, will drive away the spirit of heaviness then does that mean we're called to praise? Oh, absolutely. Oh, are you? Are, am I getting yeah. somewhere here? Yeah. Could it be, uh, could we say that we're all called to the ministry of praise? Yes. Therefore, we all have a mantle upon us to praise. Yes. Well, let's find out if there's some scriptures that back this up. Okay. All right? And maybe that's why it doesn't say a spirit of praise. It's a mantle of praise. Okay. Upon it, so that's interesting. Psalm seventy nine thirteen, New King James Version. Read that one. So we, your people and sheep of your pasture, will give you thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. Who will? We will. All of us. Yeah. And it's telling us to show forth our praise. Well, how would we do that? I have an idea by putting on the garment. For the mantle of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And it tells us, this is interesting, that we need to show forth this. It's not a silent thing that nobody would see. Okay, so it's a it's something that people see. It's evidence. It's, yeah. there's, you're showing it forth. A garment is something that you see. Mm, that's, that's a good point. And so what is the spirit of heaviness that uh, we can drive off with this mantle, is the way I'm thinking, okay. of... of, of praise to uh, uh, re remove the spirit of heaviness. Uh, what is the spirit of heaviness? Well, these the word heaviness in the Hebrew means colorless, mm -hmm. disheartened, mm -hmm. inexpressive. Okay. So we got to be the opposite of these things. Dark, faint, wax dim, dull, and heavy. Have you ever felt colorless? <laughs> yes. <laughs> disheartened? Yes. Mm -hmm. in inexpressive? Absolutely. There's times when we just... Just shut down. You got you know? nothing. <laughs> yeah. And, and dark. It's a dark place. It's a faint and wax dim, dull, and heavy place. Well, sure, we felt like that. But look at Isaiah 61 3 in the New Living Translation, and it'll help us to understand again a little more about this um, garment of praise. Go ahead and read that one. All right. So, to all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes. A joyous blessing instead of mourning, mm. festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. Wow. I mean, you talk about uh, an oak by the river that's strong. Uh, that's what he's talking about in our righteousness. But the word it uses for the spirit of, or, or, or for the um, um, uh, garment of praise, thank you, it's coming, is festive praise instead of despair. 
What do you think festive praises? Am I making you laugh again? Yeah, yeah. It's just you had that visual of a strong oak by the river. And I just was like, oh, okay, there's no river in that scripture. I put it. it, You you were like, strong oak by the river. Well, it could be a strong oak anywhere. (laughs) I I know. It could be in our backyard. We have one right there. (laughs) Boy, it's got a lot of oaks. It's really strong. It's stronger than we like. (laughs) Anyway, um, so your question was something about festive praise instead Instead of of despair. despair. What is that? that? We talk about the... The uh, garment of praise, this says festive praise instead of despair. What do you think about that? Well, you know, um, a lot of times, you know, within Scripture, we're supposed to, you know, declare our victory. Mm -hmm. And in declaring our victory through Christ Jesus, you know, there is no sorrow in that. Mm, That's right. That's good. So, um, you know, festive praise instead of despair is really changing your thinking. And and if that's a mantle that we have, that, that that means this is something we're called to do, so we obviously have the ability. So could it be questioned here that um, when, when it says put on the garment of praise, that we have a choice? Mm-hmm. I think, I, well, it doesn't actually say put on. What's it say? Uh, uh, it just says, well, we can go back to, um, uh, let's go back here. It's um, all the way, yeah, at, all the way top. at the top. I'm sorry I did great. this to you. Yeah, this is awesome. Look what I did. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want uh, to get yeah, this it's is probably nice. right up there here. somewhere. Here all right, read verse three. Um Okay, to proclaim well, hold on. So to comfort, to console, to give um them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness. It doesn't really have an so action. So it doesn't right? say put on, but we can no. use, I think it's okay scripturally to say we put it on. All right, we'll keep going. And still, people put the mantle on. Elijah took, Elisha took mant, uh, Elijah's mantle and put it on himself. Remember that? So we okay. could, I don't see anything wrong with saying put on. I just wanted to make sure that you understood okay. what the scripture didn't say. All right. Uh so is there is there a scripture for some reason i'm thinking there was but it's not, okay not one that i'm aware of okay all or right so translation. now i we uh yeah sorry we're keep going moving our notes here yep, we're having so much going. fun here you go yeah is that it that's where we're at right yeah here. the festive, festive praise, praise instead of despair we were discussing that right and f- festive is an interesting word festive it seems that there's going to be it's like a party something that you can see or hear Okay. In my view. Okay. And when he uses the word show forth in the King James Version. Okay. And then this one says festive praise instead of despair. I think that this mantle gives us a voice in the middle of dark times. Okay. Does it make sense? Sure. And some, you know, uh, uh, joy in the morning, those type of things. Yeah. And all those scriptures, you know. Yeah. Um, let's read Hebrews thirteen 15. I'll read this one. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15 in the New King James. Again... With the idea of, are we called to this? Mm-hmm. Is there really a, a mantle for us to fill this calling? Hebrews thirteen fifteen says, Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I see that, yeah, we are called. If we are believers, we're all called to be praisers. Sure. We're all called to be able to put that mantle on, and to rejoice in times of despair. But I think it's really important here, too, that it says, therefore, by <coughs> him. Mm-hmm. Because yes. we cannot do it in our own accord. Yes. We can only do it through him. And then again, it's, you know, because of the the victory of Jesus Christ that we are able to offer yes. praise in these times. And well, he said he was anointed and brought this to yeah. us. Yeah. So we have to give him credit for all of it. Right. It's not our own making. Well, that's, and that, I think that's where some of the teaching is about, you know, your thought processes and things like that. And, you know, a lot of people try to change their bad thought processes or their bad right. thought habits and things like that to make it more um, positive and to be more productive in their lives. But then they fail at that because they didn't include the person that brings the praise yes. and the mean, you know what I'm saying? So yes. it's got to yeah. be by him that we continually offer the sacrifice of praise. Right. And the other thing I want to... Uh, to let us all know is that we can all do this in him. Yes. Uh, And so it's very, very important to understand that even if you're not a praise and worship leader 
or a musician or a singer or involved in the choir or part of the music ministry of a church. We're all called. To... Oh, see, and I didn't even think that. Okay. Like, right. I didn't even think music at all. Right, right. Like, I didn't mm. think any of that. It's uh, not. It has nothing to do with music. It's just saying. I mean, that's a form of it, but yes. that's not the form of it. Mm-hmm. So you know, when I'm saying praise, like it could be in the everyday. Yeah. Praise God for this food. Praise God for waking me up this morning. Yep. Praise God for the rain. Exactly. You know, praise God that this worked out. Praise God for favor. I mean, there are so many ways to give God the glory and God the praise. It doesn't have to be just music. Exactly. Well, if somebody could say, well, I'm not in the praise ministry. Oh, well, yes, you are. Yes. Uh, You know, it's called called, everyday speech. We're called the everyday attitude. We're all called to to praise his name. It says, therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And so if we're believers, we're all called to this. Yes. That's my point. Now, there's other types of Bible garments that I found. Uh, There's one called filthy garments. But well, this is fascinating. <laughs> uh, I'll read this one. Okay. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 3 through 5, New King James Version. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Now, I think it's talking about his regular clothes. Okay. He might have been very dirty at the time. Whatever. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. Mm-hmm. He's suddenly turning, uh, looks sounds to me, he's turning what uh, uh, Joshua, having dirty clothes, and he's relating that to who he really is. Mm-hmm. And changing that, he says, and verse 5 says, And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a t- clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by. Yeah. It's talking about righteousness yeah. uh, through through Christ. So even though he had filthy garments, there's a, a he takes it from the natural and brings it to the spiritual concerning concerning him. And, now, and there's also a garment of mourning. Uh, it doesn't actually say it that way, but when Jacob heard the news that his beloved son was dead in Genesis 37 verse 34. New King James Version, it says, Jacob tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his waist Mm -hmm. and mourned for his son many days. Now, that could be called a mourning garment. It's mourning garments or garments of mourning, which is... uh, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Yeah, you got to say that right. And so uh, sackcloth and ashes is the term that we've seen. It doesn't mention the ashes Mm -hmm. here, but he put on sackcloth to to show of his uh, mourning. Uh, for the it's, loss yeah, of his son. It's a display of sorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Then there are holy garments the Bible talks about. Why don't you read this out of the book of Exodus? All right, Exodus 28, verses 2 through 4, New King James Version. And you shall make holy garments holy for garments. Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as priest. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a skillfully woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. So they shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother and his sons, that he may minister to me as priest. Now, that's talking about the natural clothes of the ministers at that time. Yeah. But it really was to give glory. Yes. And to show that this is a very serious thing. This is. And in order to uh, do his, his, the ministry of the Lord, we're going we're gonna to give it respect and honor with uh, what we wear. And, and God declared that they should, be, should do this. And they had to uh, do those holy garments just as God said for them to make them. Yes. But in order now, for him to come, in order for them to come into his presence. Yes, that's true. And that's, that's the biggest piece is, you know, um, we cannot come into the, the presence of God filthy. And that's no. why he, he gave us the ability here through Christ Jesus to remove iniquity and yes. make us righteous in order that we may be in his presence. And come boldly before the throne yes. because we are righteous. Yes. And uh, because if we walk in with sin, we, we, you know, the concept is that we'll die. Right. But when we walk in because we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, we're free to worship him and, and be right there in the throne. Right. So him. this is really just a, uh, type and shadow. Exactly. That's what, that's exactly what it is. Now, I found a scripture that tells us about God's garment. How about this one? You want to read this one? 
All right, Daniel 7, 9, New King James Version, 7, 9. I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days, God the Father, was seated. His garment was white as snow, Mm. and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. And this talks about the garment of, of Ancient of Days. And if you study Ancient of Days, most... Theologians believe it's referring to God the Father as opposed to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, his garment was white as snow. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we know there's also the natural and the spiritual version of everything, but we're really talking about his righteousness and his Mm -hmm. holiness. His purity. His purity. It's very, very interesting. I think it's interesting that they, in the next couple of scriptures here, it talks about, you know, his throne was a fiery flame because we know that, the impurities are burned out in the fire. Its wheels a burning fire. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And uh, I'm glad that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus uh, because I know I uh, had filthy rags. You know, this scripture that talks about the filthy rags. Well, I don't have that in here, but that's another good scripture we could have, could have included. But then I want to talk about Christ's garment. There's a reference to Christ's garment and our garments. Why don't you read this one in Revelation 19, 11 through 14. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. Clothed with a robe dipped in blood. What I'm assuming it's a red robe. And mm. his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Oh, that's our garments when we're coming back with Christ to rule and reign on the earth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Well, um, there's got to be a natural aspect, but also the spiritual aspect Mm -hmm. to that is we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And then there's the overcomer's garments Mm -hmm. mentioned in Revelation chapter 3. I'll read this one. Revelation 3, verses 4 through 5. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. Interesting. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. So we're talking a spiritual thing here. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have... Obviously, spiritually, some white garments we're yes. going to be wearing. You know, that's that's very, very interesting. And it's not just a covering, or it's a cleansing now. Yeah. Uh, very, very different. Here's another one talking about our calling and that mantle that's on us. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Why don't you read that one? But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who's included in that? Uh, those that are chosen. Those that are chosen, yes. And everyone who uh, becomes a believer in Christ and receives him as their Lord, they are part of this chosen generation, a royal priesthood, again, like the garments that they had to wear. We're a holy nation, uh, special people. Why? that we may proclaim the praises of him. And there's that uh, uh, mantle uh, that's been placed upon us. And we've been called out of darkness into his light. And remember, um, the spirit of heaviness translated to darkness, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So put on the garment of praise to move out uh, of the darkness and into his marvelous light. If you're you're feeling that darkness come in order to get out, Mm -hmm. put on the garment of praise and uh, move out the darkness. Did you see something? No, I'm good. Okay. So we want to talk last. We want to finish here on one thought. And I would call this a victory in life principle. Okay. It's a victory in life principle. And that is put your praises in front of the enemy. Put them there. Put them out first. And it comes. this truth comes from Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 30. It's a great story. I thought we'd just read portions of it, but then I thought, no, let's read all 30 verses and okay. see this truth. And so why don't you do 10 and I'll do, uh, or five, you do five and I'll do five. And, and so, okay. uh, but this is a great story 
about how they put their praises out front and won the battle. Go ahead. All right, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 through 30. Great ish. story. Here okay. we go. Listen New up Living and listen Translation. Carefully. Uh, verse 1. After this, the armies of the Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Mayanites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. Uh-oh, not good news. They are already at Hazazan Tamar. Mm-hmm. That was another name for En Gedi. Yes. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. Yeah, how he, about that? He was he, he felt some darkness coming on. He's yeah. He's terrified. Yeah. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. Okay. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. And he prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. O oh, our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity, such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, mm -hmm. and you will hear us mm -hmm. and rescue us. Mm -hmm. And now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt, so they went around them and did not destroy them. Verse 11, go ahead. Now see how they reward us, for they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives, and children, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehaziel. Thank you, Jehaziel. Son of Zechariah, son of ben Beniah, ben son of Jael, Jael son of Madaniah, a Good. Levite, who was a descendant of Asaph. You gave me these verses on purpose. I did. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And then verse 16, tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. But you will not even need to fight. Take your positions, then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. This is pre-war, right? And uh, verse 20, early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, listen to me, all you of Judah, or you, shoot, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you'll be able to stand firm. Believe in His prophets, and you will succeed. Now this is gets very interesting. Verse twenty one. Go ahead. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising Him for His holy splendor. This is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord, his faithful love endures forever. They put the praisers out front uh -huh. and the people with all the weapons in behind them. Uh -huh. So they were using praise as a weapon. Uh -huh. Very interesting. Verse 22. Is this me? Yes. Okay. At the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. Wow. 
the armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, all they saw were dead bodies lying mm. on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Isn't that something? King, is it Jehoshaphat or Jehoshaphat? Yeah, either Jehoshaphat, way. Jehoshaphat, whatever. And his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, and other valuables, more than they could carry. There were so many plunder that it took them so three days. So much plunder. I'm sorry. There was, that makes sense. <laughs> there was so much plunder that it took them three days just to collect it all. And the last five verses. On the fourth day, they gathered in the Valley of Blessing which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. It is still called the Valley of Blessing today. Then all the men returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, overjoyed that the Lord had given them the victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music of harps, a lyres, lyre, how do you say that? I think it's lyres. Lyres. I could be wrong. At lyres, lyres, lyres and lyres. trumpets. I can't, I don't know, I should know how lyres, to say that. Lyres, lyres. Or lyres, lyres. And trumpets, and they proceeded to the temple of the Lord. So they're coming to the temple. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came over them. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. What's the principle here? Praise first. Put it out there. When that heaviness starts to come on, just like it did to Jehoshaphat, uh, he followed what the Lord said and put your praisers out front. Mm -hmm. Get it going. And that is the biggest weapon. And they won that entire battle through praise and didn't even have to lift, uh, lift a weapon. Yep. Isn't that something? So um, I like this here. I'll bring my little object again. A garment hanger can resemble a question mark. So the question is, what will you wear today? And the answer should be, I'm putting on the garment, the garment <laughs> of praise. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you for your word today. I pray that everybody who's listening, and including us, uh, that we get a deeper revelation of how our praise is like a weapon. And when we feel any spirit of heaviness, we need to pull out that mantle of our praise and begin to worship God, and he will bring victory to us every time. I thank you, Father, for this message, and I pray for everybody listening that it's a blessing to you. And you may even have heard this message many times in the past, uh, but we need to be reminded. Yeah. And we need to stand up in our worship and in our praise, knowing that that's really how we're going to get through the difficulties of life. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, say this after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe. I believe. You're the Son of God. You're the Son of God. Who died on the cross. Who died on the cross. And rose from the dead. And rose from the for dead. For all our sins. For all our sins. I ask you. I ask you. To come into my heart. To come into my and heart. And be my Lord. And be my Lord. I ask you. I ask you. To forgive me. To forgive of me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. Right now. Right now. I receive you. I receive as you. As my Lord. As my Lord. And Savior. And Savior. Thank you. Thank you. For forgiving me. For forgiving me. And making me. And and making the righteousness of God, the righteousness in of Christ God, Jesus, in Christ Amen. Jesus, Amen. Wow, that's awesome! If you prayed that prayer for the first time today, I want you to let us know by emailing me at Pastor Jim at TMH, which stands for the Master's House, TMHnow.org. We'd love to hear from you that you prayed and received Christ, or if you prayed that prayer and you're coming back to Christ today, let us know yeah. that that's the impact this this uh, message has had on you. And I pray that you will, uh, like us, all of us, will have a new uh, reminder and thought, oh yeah, um, th and we need to get that mantle of our praise that's on us because we're all called to give him glory and praise. Amen? Amen. Do you have any thoughts about that? I have a lot of thoughts, but I'm just going to sit on them for right now. You're going to sit on them. Okay, yeah. that's good. So uh, we're really glad you're here. And guess what? Let's take communion together. Okay. I think that'd be a great idea. So if you have uh, your juice... And your bread or cracker or something like that. Oh, I used to <clears throat> bread and I was so proud of you and you went back to cracker. Well, bread. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. In the New Living Translation, it says, First, Christ said, You do not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sin, nor you were you pleased with them. 
for they are required by the law of Moses. Verse 9, then he said, look, I've come to you to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Mm -hmm. Father, we just thank you. Yeah. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you completed the work and paid for our sin. Uh, you were beaten, you were whipped. By your stripes you were healed. All our needs are met by your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. And we take this bread right now, like you did at the last covenant meal. There you go. Okay. And uh, he said, take, eat. This is the body which is broken. This is my body which is broken for you, he said. And do this in remembrance of me. And uh, so we eat this bread believing that we are healed, we are delivered, and all our needs are met. And we give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Once. Aren't you glad that he doesn't have to come back and keep doing it over and over again yes. like they did with animals? But that's what this is saying. Mm -hmm. He did it once for all time. After supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often uh, in remembrance of me. And then also, I'll be coming back soon. So, Jesus, we thank you for shedding your blood. And uh, that we're not just covered, but we're washed, we're cleansed. All our sins is as far as the east is from the west. We give you all the glory for it. We drink this now saying, yes, you did this for us. And we receive it in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us with uh, the Covenant Meal. <clears throat> and um, you know, this is our church service, <clears throat> and I believe that uh, all of us should uh, be willing to <clears throat> give God the glory and strength in, by supporting uh, the kingdom of God on the earth financially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's uh, supporting your church or the ministry that you're involved with. And, uh, <clears throat> but... Uh, let me read Psalm 29, verse 1. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and strength. And I was thinking there's a lot of ways to give uh, the glory to God and strength to God. And we can do that with our words and our praise. But we can also do it by tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. It's a way to get financially involved in his kingdom on the earth. And I know that as we get involved in his kingdom on the earth financially, he gets involved in our care and the things that we do in our businesses, in our lives, that our needs are met by his riches and, gl and glory by Christ Jesus. So I would call tithes and offerings a great way to give God the glory and strength. Absolutely. And that's what I was seeing. And so uh, we'd like to give you an, uh, an opportunity to give to support what we're doing here through the Master's House and this uh, broadcast, this program that we do every Sunday. We also have a, a, a missions outreach that we're receiving for the next few weeks on. <clears throat> and uh, Danish Otuama, uh, who's a friend of ours, and he lives in Nairobi, Africa. And it's a tough time over there. He's written to us, and he says that the, a lot of the churches are shut down, and they're not meeting at all, and, and um, they don't have some of the um, Internet uh, abilities that we have here either. Right. <clears throat> not everywhere. And he was asking if he could get uh, some more finances to, <clears throat> excuse me, print the material that we have given him. We've given him lots of uh, great material uh, to distribute in Nairobi. And he just wants to print it and to go uh, door by door and out street witnessing and share more. So if you'd like to be a part of that particular missions outreach mm -hmm. in Nairobi through he and his family, I think that uh, you just show them a picture of it, yeah, of that family, great, uh, great uh, people. Um, that if you... Uh, Go to well. This is how to do it. <laughs> I have two ways to support. Uh, I'm getting myself together. It's okay. It's Several right. ways you could support this ministry and also this uh, work that we're doing in Nairobi. One would be through the mail, and that would be TMH. You could write to TMH at the Master's House. It would be at Post Office Box One Five Six Eight in Mechanicsville, Virginia, 
2316. Uh, you can also give by debit or credit card. And uh, we use a electronic system called Tithely, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. And if you go to our website, tmhnow.org, you can click on the giving page and the giving button. It'll send you to the Tithely site to do that. Uh, or you can download that app to your phone, the Tithely app. Several ministries use it, and you may already be familiar with it, but look for the Master's House RVA. Is that what we're looking for? Or the no. Master's House Mechanicsville? Yes. Virginia. What? I got okay. all confused. Back up. That was something else. <laughs> back That's up. That's YouTube. Back up. Go to tmhnow.org. Yes. Or you can go to the Tithely app, which is T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Yes. And make sure Look that it for is the Master's, the Master's House, House in Mechanicsville. Mechanicsville. <laughs> I got that right. I made my correction. And, um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, she used to do this, and I'm trying to get It's okay. Keep going. So. You're good. I'm, I'm organized. You are doing great, babe. I was getting Praise YouTube God. confused with time. I know. Huh, late. <laughs> you believe it? So you can do that through the website. Um, and so let's pray over our giving. We do appreciate your support. And thank you for uh, enabling us to do what God has called this ministry to do. So let's say this uh, confession of faith over our giving. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I was lost. I was lost. But now by your grace. But now by your grace. I've been saved. I've been saved. I worship you. I worship you. And rejoice. And rejoice. In every good thing. In every good thing. You've given me. You've given me. I bring. I bring. And consecrate. And consecrate. My tithes. My tithes. And offerings to you. And offerings to you. The first fruits. The first fruits. Of the land you've given of me. Of the land you've given me. You've established. You've established. Your kingdom. Your kingdom. On the earth. On the earth and you've looked down from heaven and you've looked down from heaven and blessed us and blessed us your people your people and the land you've given us and the land you've given in us in Jesus name in Jesus name amen thank amen. you father for blessing our work and uh, blessing all those who gave and the things that they're doing too so if you want to find out more about the master's house we have two websites you can go to one yes. is tmhnow.org and a second one is family bible revolution Dot com. Mm -hmm. If you go to FamilyBibleRevolution.com, that's about a message that we have for families and how to bring the Word of God into your home. Mm -hmm. uh, watch the video. There's two that uh, will get you started there. And you can also find us on YouTube. This is where it's the Master's House RVA. Mm -hmm. And that's our YouTube site. You can get uh, a backlog of messages like last Archived. week. Archived. Archived messages. Backlog. Archived messages. Archived messages. Previous messages. messages. And, of course, we're here on Facebook for TMH Now. And then the web, uh, email, if you want to email us, it's Pastor Jim at tmhnow.org. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, Tuesdays. we got every Tuesday we have something really cool. I love Tuesdays. This is the message that we have for families. It's not yeah. a Facebook Live message. It's a Zoom uh, or Facebook Live um, event. It's a Zoom event. We use Zoom, and we meet together, and we all have what we call family worship. Mm -hmm. We use that night to mentor people how to do this in their homes. And we'd love to mentor you and teach you how to do family worship in your home. Join us. And the way that you would do that is just go to the Family Bible Revolution for FamilyBibleRevolution.com, that website. Click on the calendar and then look on Tuesday. Click on Tuesday and it'll open up and give you the um, link for every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock uh, on Zoom. Yeah. And you can join us. That would be Eastern Standard Time. You can um, also find it on the TMH Now. And TMH Now. Or site. calendar. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, really wish that you would join us on Tuesdays. It's a great so night. So wonderful. Yeah, it's very, very special when we all get to know one another and we meet together. Well, and it's, you know, it's fellowship. We were talking about, you know, um, a lot of people have said that they've missed church. But remember, church is not a building. Church is a body. Yeah. And so it's important that you fellowship with saints. Sure. So this is what Tuesday night's all about. Yeah. You know, if you miss it, then you're really missing the people. And so you really need to be a part of the people. You need to make sure yeah. that that's your priority if that's really, you know, that you're missing church. Yeah. So make it a priority. Um it is such a great time in the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is such a great time to be able to fellowship with others and talk about the Bible. If you don't have Jesus to talk about, what do you have to talk about? Right, right. So it's one of those things where you've got to say, okay, let me sit down and let me list my priorities here. 
You know, is um, TV watching for a half hour more important than getting together with the saints and encouraging and edifying each other? It's not. And we all know the answer to that. But sometimes we've got to just remind ourselves that this is my priority. So, um, and I suggest you do it because it's honestly one of the most uplifting things in my week. Yeah. To be able to hear other people talk about Jesus with just as much passion as I have in my heart. Yes. Or to kindle that passion. I love it. And it's a place where you can have a voice too. Yeah, absolutely. And we'd love to hear, you know, what you think about or what questions. We're... Yeah. Sometimes you just come with questions. And mm-hmm. You're like, what does that mean? What do you exactly. think that means? Yeah, or prayer requests. And yeah. things. A lot, and it's a, lot a happens, safe it's space. It's a safe mm-hmm. space. You know, there's there's forgiveness in this environment. And, and there's grace. And we limit it to 40 minutes long. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's not going to be yep. an, a burden in any way. No, it's quick and, and effective. Yes. Very, very effective. Very love spiritual. It. So much fun. <laughs> so... Help us reach more by uh, following us, sharing us, and commenting. We appreciate that. Uh, And so I want to say this again. uh, We honor all military today by remembering the over one million who have given their lives in service to our country. We thank all the veterans and those who are currently serving to keep us safe and free. Mm -hmm. And so um, we honor uh, Memorial Day tomorrow. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching. We do hope to see you Tuesday night and next Sunday. So God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.